Hello guys, so Jerry speaking. Welcome to Bedtime Stories, episode number 375. And today I read you a horror book called No Power on Earth. Now before I read you this book, um, there will be some cautious. Okay, I want to show you some words about the book, okay? And there are no pictures throughout the book, okay? During that time frame, okay? Just want to know about that, okay? So let's read it now, shall we? So we got for us. No Power on Earth. It's written by Julia Remen and P I G G I N. This is published by Globe Fearin a Pearson Learning Group. Um a, a development by Flashback Horror book series. This is copyright 2004 by Pearson Education Incorporated, all reserved. And they are the following books that, have, that, that only has no power on earth. There's only 12 of them so far. There are The, the Caller, the, the Disappearing Man, The Hearth, Live Bait, um, The Lonely One, The Masterpiece, The Empties, The Mistake, Night Game, Night Ride, The Rare Shell, and Tomb of Horror. That'll be it. Now here it is. My name is Bill Bello. Okay. Last night I wasn't just an ordinary guy. But I was just probably happier than most guys. Okay. Maybe just a little too happy. Okay. I just landed a dream job for the construction company in South America. Okay. It meant uh, moving from country to country. Meeting different people and seeing strange and exciting places. It was a, a, a kind of adventure. Lisa and I have always what said we were wanting to have it about after getting married. I took Lisa to dinner and told her the next page. Anyway, good news, okay? I asked her to marry me. We were we were going to take top top take much with with us, but who cared? Um. We have always said things that matter to us. I expect her face to light up with joy and excitement. I know Lisa since we were juniors in high school. Um, we have talked uh, about a life together, just like the um, ones the new uh, my new job would have given us. Just uh, that's why I was completely puzzled when she looked up at me with such a sad face. Okay, Bill, she said, I want so much to marry you and for us to get, get away together. I want that more than anything in the, in the planet, but I can't. I love you. Don't follow me. Jeez. Then she jumped up and ran up in the, in the restaurant. Okay, the next morning, my doorbell rang very early. Um, my parents were still asleep. I went downstairs to open the door. The, um, young girl who delivers our newspaper was standing there beside her bike. She held out the newspaper in an envelope. Bill, Lisa Fisher, asked me to give this to you, she said. Then she jumped in her bike and went well away. Jeez. Scary, I know. I took the envelope, um... And upstairs and open it inside with a long letter. I read it and I couldn't believe it. This is what I said. Dear Bill, sorry I ran, um, ran out so suddenly last night. I'm wanting to say goodbye. I can't marry you. Not. Next page. Anyway. Um, next week. Not ever. Go to South America um, and forgive me. Forget about me. I wish I just let it go at, at that, but I can't. Not after all, the, the things we plan and te talk about for years. I owe you an explanation, so I go tell you the whole story. I know now um, that I should have told you about this a long time ago. Jeez, this is scary. I, I guess I was just hopping, um, whatever. I've told you. 
Okay, the things that would uh, work out out for us. But I see now I've been I was being foolish. I'm help it's hopeless. And if you read this, you probably won't believe it, but it's true. Every word of it. A lot of people think I'm crazy. Maybe the world be, would be better. That way, that was the way. Um, it would be easier for, for you not to see me again. But you, because you can't, Bill. Not ever. You can't save me. Um, please don't try. It all began when I was fourteen, and my great aunt would have died. Jeez. My pa used uh to talk a, about her. Every once in a while. Okay. He claimed that she was pretty strange. She never married and lived for years in a huge old mansion or every family home. When her parents died, she kept just kept on living there all along. No one's my family's father's family ever saw and her, her heard for her. Um she when she died she left um all of my money, um, um, and possessions for her two surviving relatives, my father and his cousin John. Cousin John got most of the money, and some of it went went to charity. My father got the whole household effects. That made my father angry. Okay. Um, knowing that his cousin was already rich, becoming richer, while. Well, he's gone some junky old furniture. Next page. Anyway. Of course, it didn't take much to make uh, my father angry. You never knew him, Bill. Um, but it, it was a hard, bitter person for most of his life. He had health problems. He, when he was so young, since he was young, um, and he spent a lot of his time feeling sorry for himself. He could never hold on to this job for very long. Most of the time, he was very poor and made my mother's life pretty miserable. Felt worried, you know? Anyway, I'll never forget the day Aunt Rose's um, thing was delivered. My father was uh, lying on the sofa, as usual, claiming he was feeling sick. Yes. When the van pulled out outside, um, my mother shook him and said, the things were, from your aunt are here. My father got pushed up in his face, forward into the pillow, and said, I don't care. Wow. The moment man carried a lot of, he- lot of heavy furniture up the three flights of stairs in my apartment. Most of it was very old, but it was very beautiful. There was even a Polish World War, War, War piano. It looks like so out of place in a shabby apartment that we live in. Along with all the furniture and the piano was a pain. It was so portrait of the dark young man. It was a uniform with gold buttons. A sword hung up on his thigh and his dark eyes looking to say follow you with whatever you want. I like it to pain right away. The young officer seemed to be smiling at me Whenever I look at it, those eyes look at, as it enjoyed seeing me. I know it was only a trick of the light, but it made me feel good. Next page. My mother called Ralph uh, Norton uh, to help hang um, uh, the portrait, okay? Ralph um, lived one, uh, one floor behind, below us, in, in our building. He was a very nice person. He felt sorry for my mom and the hard life she had. He did all the work around her apartment and that, and that my father said he was too sick to do this. My father's face, mother's face, excuse me, okay, anyway, um, was always rosy and younger and broken. Wherever Ralph was around, I hope this holds, um, Rob said, telling the picture of Hooker into the crocking wall. Um, there was a snowfall of plaster. But you managed to slid, um, slide up, excuse me, I misspoke, anyway, again. The wire on the, the hook, 
Anyway, I have it held. I want to stand it too close to it. He told my mother, if I have a baby fell, it it could be do some damage. Yeah, my mother held his hand for a long t time when she fainted. Him. My mother woke up and about an hour later, with you know, all the stuff um, this stuff came from. He asked mom and said, "Oh, that's right." It was um um wow. He got his whatever over. He had a band down. He started to play a road too. He began to sing. Well, when we meet again, no power on earth would, would be part of us then. Ease. He laughed. Um, don't know where I ever learned a corny uh, old number like that. He said. He walked over and stood in front of the portrait. Hey, I never did, he said. When I was a kid, they said it was a worth a lot of next page. Anyway. Come on, page 10. Thank you. Anyway, money. Wow, okay. Um, I got some get some art dealer to tell us how much. Right now, we just drag it down to the pawn shop. Would you use it in cash? No. My own voice surprised me. It sounded like my own, someone else's voice coming from my own mouth. These. Anyway. Um, you can pound it. Um, uh, it's the only thing we ever had that I love. Look, what, what was listened to what was given us get orders around here now, my father said. Uh, look, princess, if I, I'll get it back tomorrow right now. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll know how we get, you get things up back, my mother sneered. Where's my watch? Where's my engagement ring? Kiss the picture goodbye, Lisa. Um, I ran and showed that in front of the picture, my father's face turned me. Ease. He pushed me aside and reached upon the, up the lip of the picture of the wall. His hands never touched the frame. There was a flash of the fairy brad. The heavy pain seemed to leap from the wall. It hit my father on the, in the head. Ease. Knocking him down, he lay on the rip, but then make a sound. My father was dead. Yeah, why? Now I was the only one to see has seen the red flash. Um, from the eyes of the picture. The doctor and my father died him, uh, from hitting his head on the floor. Um, when the pain knocked him down. Jeez. Anyway, later I heard the doctor tell Ralph Nornstein, that's my dad, I don't know, um, that he couldn't explain the burn marks in my father's face and hand my father had. Next page. Anyway, um, said that um, they certainly weren't there my, before the accident. I didn't say anything about what I see. I could. I can't really say what we missed my father. I feel. I'm sure my father loved him once long ago when they were first married. But after years of unhappiness caused mostly by his laziness and mean meanness. I guess a love died. And for me, as for me, he had never paid much attention for, to me or taken any interest in what I had. I did. She says, anyway. He never seemed to, to know or care that I was even around. It's hard to miss someone who treats you that way. My mother and Ralph Norstead were married seven months after my father died. We moved into the clean, um, new house, um, just a side of town. The house I'm written in, now, um, the, uh, house I will never sleep again. And Rowena's, um, furniture looks perfect in the long foot past the living room of the uh, new house. Wow. The portrait hung up on one end of our, our room. For a long time, I couldn't look at it. I kept telling myself with the whole thing with my father, just a crazy accident. The eyes and the pain still uh, follow me, but they look astray. Strange spot somehow, huh? Okay. Things were better, though, uh, away from the swamp, my father's problems, okay? 
Um, I had a new life. I have nicer clothes and many new friends. And I met you, Bill. Um, makes sense in any way. I like you from the first moment I saw you in math class. And but if you if you remember, I I was never let you c come in, in the living room. Next page. Anyway. When he called me, some of the excuses I made must have seemed silly. I made them um, because I was afraid you actually usually drove me home from school. But that day in the fall, when we both were 17, remember, I wanted to uh, walk alone. I didn't tell you that I had a feeling that someone had to, was really going to happen. I knew I couldn't stop it. But I wanted to put it off in as long as I could. But I walked home as a tomb because you the run through my head. You know how it is when you hear the notes of your mind, but you can't think of, of what song it is. The tune seemed to grow louder. It began to fill the space around me. Okay. The dry leaves under my feet. Seems to crackle into it. The branches of the trees left with the, the time for it. It was sunset. It was a run sun. A red sun to me forget what. Seemed to be singing the rhythm of the tune. The cat ran up to me, meowing. It was meowing the muffled words of the tune. The sun was up on the street. And when um, I saw our house, hanging on the dim not lights like that, Began to run. I had a feeling that something horrible was waiting there. And the sun was still, still Steve, to be taking over the wall around me. I pushed my key in the log, opened the door, and stepped into the hall, sharp fingers and uh, like a skeleton's, tore to my shoulders. The next, next page. Anyway, come on, I'm moving on. Anyway, there we go. Next thing I knew was um, a full face without features was pushed up and, and, and against mine. I tried to scream, but the coarse skin hand was slapping on my mouth. E. Do, the, do, the, do what they were saying, but well, you won't be hurt. The nasty boy said through his lips that didn't move. It dragged me over to the living room, another creature who's Flat, featureless face with a sticky green grab me and tie my hands behind my back. The blue faced one pulled the rough piece of cloth that from somewhere and gagged me. I was numb with terror, but I was always, I was quickly realized that we, there were not creatures from any another world. There were human beings from stockings for, for, uh, over their heads. There were cells on the eyes so that they can see. My mother's jewelry case was in the middle of the floor. Besides, it was a bur bulging sack. Wow. I was vulnerable things. I knew vulnerable things that belonged to my family were in it. I didn't really care. Wow. I only wanted to stay alive. But then I woke toward the end of the room. And then I saw that there was beams that I brought a little step ladder from the kitchen. Jeez. It stood in front of the porch of the officer. Suddenly the song uh, blared loud and clear in my mind. It was so loud that it seemed that burgers could be able to hear it. I knew what it was now, but it was a song uh, that my father had sung the day he died. Um... I did not speak or move, but I could see the face of pain um, had um, changed. It was quick. It was quickly a trick um, of a of a light. The mo the dark eyes uh, were foul with hate. If I could have made a sound, I guess I next page. Anyway, come on. Do I have to move on to the next page? There we go. No, anyway, anyway. When I mourned the faceless beast, but I was helpless. The blue-faced beast moved towards the ladder 
I shut my eyes, walk out the porch of space, and but I've only waited a second. There was a swishy, hissing sound, a food white splash that I can see through my closed eyelids. The feet um let out on every scream. I open my eyes, he let let his left hand hung a thread of flash, okay? A starting horror. The portrait's eyes were wild, wild, and his mouth was twisted. Mm hmm. <sighs> we're doing fine. We were 20 minutes away. We were tw for 10 minutes away for the tape. But anyway, there's another flash. The number successfully hissed. The green faced beef howled, and, and the stocking was fla set, splashed. Like that. Excuse me. Okay, anyway. Blood stormed with a terrible gash and the flesh beneath it. The screams were horrible. I wanted to scream as well, but I was I was gagged. Okay. The thieves were lucky in a way. Um just then the squad car was passing the house. The policeman heard the terrible screams and broke in the the door. The blue faced thief was didn't lose his hand. Sergeant stitch it. Um, back on, those would be useless. The green faced burglar turned out to be a girl. Jeez. Anyway, her scar was too deep and uh, with plastic surgery uh, to be in the much help. Um, neither of them could tell which would have happened. The police guessed they must have gotten um, to the fight with the knives they carried, okay? The thief said that wasn't uh, true, but it was who I believe him. But will you have believed me if I have told you what he sees? Do you believe me now, Bill? At the time you kn knew it was a band of robbery, then I was sick afterwards. Next page. Now you know that I couldn't tell you then, but it wasn't the wild cries. And the spurring blood was that scared me most. It was what I saw when the thieves were gone. Wow. And I looked at the portrait of the officer. The sword at the side was no longer just a silver col collar, a seal. Along one edge ran a thin line of blood red. It was had it cut quickly and neatly the flash. Wow. I tried not to look at it, the picture for a long time after that. Uh, but one night I woke up and heard the sob again. It was all around me. Fill my room. Some, something drew me down the stairs. Even in the living room, the song pounding loudly in the air. Soon, soon find my portrait in the shoulder. Shoulders, my dad, excuse me, okay. Right. His eyes burned, burned into mine. And the words of the song swore and rang out in the room said this. When, oh, when we meet again, no power on earth will be part of them. I knew why he had, he had uh, there's only one uh, word sent from me. It was, it was because of you, Bill. We weren't serious about each other What? Now, you asked me to marry you uh, when you had got a job. I said I wanted to go far, far away. Now you know what. Last night I went home. The parents are, are away, so, so I w we were alone in the house. I went in the living room and stood in front of him. He loved and made me... Why were they bother? Next page. Brave. Look at him and say words that I haven't meant to say, and yet yeah, I think I have wanted to say them in one very long time. I am his wife and you're dead, I said. And Bill, your, uh, his eyes burned, and there was swirling, swept force of some kind surging around me. It caught me, turned me ar around. He held, it held me. I fought it and I grabbed it. Gravity something like that. Um, it seemed to tear something away from it. I beat it and with my own strength. Um, and then it let me go. But I knew it was only for a little while, Bill. 
he killed my mate, Mammon, because he might take it away from me. Think what he, he'll do to someday that we want to take me away. I know you can't believe me, believe this. Um, maybe it's what the Emperor with this letter will make you believe enough to listen to me. Go, Bill. I'm trying to forget you ever knew me. I love you. Goodbye, Lisa. In this envelope will be a button, a brass button with an old, old material uniform. He oversized me, and to be honest, we almost done that for a minute. Book to read, it was so much. You know, it's, I can't already take it, and it was too much. You know, when I finished just reading this letter, I stood there with my room done. Lisa was right when she said I wanted to believe her story. At first, I didn't believe it. Will you? I agree, it was sad to me. Then I read the letter a second time, and, and I believe I changed my mind. It. Next page. Anyway, it's almost done with the book. Anyway, sorry, crazy. But explain a lot of uh, mystery about Lisa's past that she would never tell me. And there was one other thing that we, that she made up a story like that. I knew she was wasn't crazy. I had to tell her, know her for too long and, sh and too well. And I was sure she loved me and she wanted to marry me. The story had to be true. And I had no choice but to believe it. Um, I knew what I had to do. And if Lisa were to be free, the portrait must be destroyed. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, do this. Anyway. I found my small, a small axe. Pour nitrogen in the bottle. And stuff a rag in the snack. I got out of my car. And drove as fast as I could to Lisa's house. The front door was open. And I went to the... Half hall. It was a great gray day. The hall was almost dark. The strange greenish light was coming in, on, under the closed door. The living room. There was cold air. Steaming up as well. I'm trying to tell myself that someone must have left the window open and lamp on. But I know better. The axe was in my waist. Hanging from the belt of my jeans. I held the bottle of Current sense, yeah, I spoke to so many thousand sports. Anyway, uh, in one hand, the imagine the other. I stood there for a second thinking it wasn't too late, wasn't it? I should just turn around and uh, go home, pack and pack, and next week I get the plane to South America alone. I told myself that. Then I went push the door open to my foot. We were standing in the center of the room, all around her. Was a crawling mess, but when I stood there, I could see the um. There's gonna be the last two pages to wrap things up. Anyway, um, face the page, its mouth was twisted. Its eyes were wild. Lisa saw me, and then when I had it in my hands, Bill, don't! She cried out. Grab her and push her out in the open door. Then I struck the match, light and the um ray um. Right, someone that excuse me, okay, right. And hurled the ball at the painted face. When it hit, flame shot out. I didn't want to see the face burning. Exactly. I ran into the hall, took Lucy to my, my hand, headed the car, I opened the door and and the driver's side, pushed her across the seat, climbed in the next city to her, drove off, not even thinking of where we're going. The important thing that Lisa was free. She was crouched down in the seat beside me, crying. Her hands covered her face. I reached down and pulled them away. Lisa, look at me, I said. She stopped crying and raised her head. My blood turned into ice. Wow. It wasn't Lisa's face that looked back at me, nor I. It was the face and eyes of the portrait. So you're telling me at the end of the story it was a portrait all along? It was basically a horror movie. We're past Free Man One, which I came this from. So that was um No Power on Earth. 
Yeah, it was basically kind of like a scary movie difference, but it was basically about a horror movie difference, but basically more of a difference between horror, radar movies, and whole entire thing. Let's just see what happens. And that was Bedtime Stories episode number 375. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next one. Which will be Bedtime Stories episode number 376. For the night of July 21st, 2023. I'm not sure what book I'm going to read next. Who happens? Now, my excuse me, you're going to end this episode of Bedtime Stories and go to bed. Because after this, I'll post something on social media. Then I'm have to go to bed, go to work tomorrow. Because after this, I'm going to run errands and read episode 3 and 4 for you guys on This is One Saturday More Adventures. And then get this out of the way. Till next time, please join us by the baby. For more videos, I can still. This is it. Out. See ya.